Our next presentation is from Beijing, China, with Tong Chong Dai Chen of the China Biodiversity Conservation and Green Development Foundation, who's going to explain how the River Eye app integrates AI with biodiversity conservation through bottom-up bottom environmental governance. Welcome again, Chong. Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my presentation. My name is Zhang Laqian. I'm from the China Biodiversity Conservation and Green Development Foundation. Today, I will be introducing River Eye, an app that incorporates AI with biodiversity conservation via bottom-up environmental governance. My presentation will be in four parts, its background, the app's introduction, its inner working mechanism, and finally, the data analysis. Let's go one by one. The key points I'm trying to make here is that only by using technology can we effectively strengthen the public participation, and only by using big data can we strengthen the aquatic ecological protection. So, a little bit for the background of the app. Currently, China has 2,071 marine protected areas, but only 4.1 of the uh, ocean was protected. And that's far from what the CBD COP15 has designated. And also, China has just uh, passed a law on the 10-year-old fishing ban on the Yangtze River, which is uh, good news for all the environmental protectors in China. And there's plenty other measures like banning extensive fishing measures, banning explosive fishing, etc. etc. So I said to say that the situation is going on pretty well in China. Even though there's a plenty of uh, legislation just came out about water protection, there's still plenty of problems when it comes to uh, the law enforcement and problems like this. We have lack of train stop, we don't have that much uh, river shafts, and the areas in China are too large for an overall supervision. We have scarce equipment for radaring and searching the uh, uh, illegal electrical features. And we have lackluster law enforcement because it's water areas, they're plenty hard to catch. But that's the uh, problem before this app came out. So, the core mechanism of the River Eye app is basically about enhancement and big data. Uh, as for enhancements, it's mainly uh, we serve as a platform of connection between government and the people, so that the government can work more efficiently and people can report more efficiently as well. And as for big data, uh, we have this uh, mastermind-like platform that can do big data analysis to influence the government decision-making afterwards, and we can provide the data for the future policy. Uh, as for the data collection and the mechanism, it's uh, quite complicated, but it's mainly uh, came down to two parts. Once a user has spotted illegal ads, whether it's sand mining, polluting, or electric uh, poisoning, uh, poisoning, or explosive fishing, they will all be first filed by the AI to determine whether it's a false report or not. And then, after second-handed uh, human uh, classification, it will eventually came down to the governmental part and we will tell them whether you should act on it and how you should act on it. Uh, this has cut down a lot of human, human resources when it comes down to collecting reports and coming down to the sites because uh, River Eye already does the observe and report part for them. As for the data coverage, we have about uh, 50,000 users in total, which I think is a pretty big number. Uh, they came over around 27 provinces. Uh, some of the provinces don't have a lot of water areas, so they're not included. And just for the past three years, we have submitted about 9,000 valuable clues. And we have direct cooperation with 105 local uh, governmental units, for example, Fisheries Administration or Public uh, Security Bureau, etc., etc. So, 
Let's take a look at the control page about how we do the real-time transmission with authorities. First, once a user sends a report that was identified as valuable by the a AI system, it will first show the river chip how it looks like uh, in, the, in that place, whether you should come to it with the right equipment or you should bring more people. It all can be done via this terminal. And then uh, by the, uh, with the help of Baidu and some other maps, we provide them the most optimized road finding. And finally, after they have sent in the reports after they done the investigation, we will let them have the feedback directly to the local government, which is far more convenient than the paperwork report sessions. Finally, I will give you another shot about what the department is seeing. Uh, the left picture is what the fishery bureaus of the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs is seeing. As you can see, the purple indicates electrical fishing, which are popping out all over the country. And the right one is that uh, it's what the Public Security Bureau in Chongqing is seeing. Uh, some of the green uh, ones suggested the case has been taken care of, and the purple one suggests that it still needs to be investigated. So, finally, let's come to the data analysis part. Here are just a few of the data that we have taken for last year. We can see the illegal fishing cases coming up and down, whether the electrical fine is taken at day or at night, and some of the cases that uh, all over the county we have taken in September. And finally, the classification of crime, etc., etc. These are all valuable information for the government uh, to absorb and use in their future decision making. Finally, I'd like to give a conclusion about the solution to the previous problem before the app. Uh, the lack of staff was solved by low interest volunteering. As long as you have this app and you take a pic, the platform will take care of the rest. And as for the fake reports, we have AI system for reports filtering. And as for scarce equipment, a phone is enough. You don't have to bring camera, you don't have to bring drones. The volunteer is okay with just a phone. And finally, since we have guards a connection with local government, we actually have coordinated law enforcement without all the paperwork, without all the second-hand information. And that will be all. Thank you for listening. With public participation, we can all become an eye for the river. Uh, if you are interested in the topic, you can follow us on our social media, and that will be all. Thank you very much, Chong. Um, you highlight there the challenges of working across users and authorities, and I think that's going to be, you know, analogous, very similar to the challenges we're facing about working across ecologists and uh, IT professionals and engineers and so on. And uh, the importance of spatial management in fisheries is analogous or very similar to any other type of control or any other type of maintenance rules that you might have. And it, and it opens the question to me of, of what type of themes might we need to consider to help ensure our work that we're doing is, is ticks off the governance box. So we've listened today about many people speaking about the need for the right type of labeled imagery. We've also you know, spoken about connecting different types of communities together to, to realize what we'd like to realize. But we potentially need a theme also to think about the rules, the rules of the game, whether you're going to call that data control, privacy, um, access, and so on. And I think this is going to be a, a bit like how, how they start to think about self-driving cars. What are the rules for these types of things to operate on a road? What, are, what is the rules that we'll have to think about once we start to collect data sets that are informing the management of a fishery or an aquaculture venture? And that data is being used by others. So, for example, we heard in the last talk about how that data um, held by the Nature Conservancy is open for collaboration, but it's not open yet. And how, how do you foresee some of the questions of, 
of sensitivity around this information and, and what kind of themes, questions have come up around that thinking about your app? Yeah, uh, great question. Thank you, Mr. Kim. And, and as for uh, the perspective of our NGO, we think that NGO mainly plays the role of uh, interconnecting between the government and the people. And by that, we think that the government only do what they needed to do. For example, uh, law enforcement, which that we cannot take on by ourselves. But as for the others, like remote censoring or data collection, or even comes out with reports, that can all be done by the academia and the local communities. Uh, we all should do what we do best. And as for the government, uh, they are great with uh, powerful legislative measures. They are great with enforcing stuff, for example, the 10 year old fishing ban. But when it comes down to scientific researches and the local community protections, we think we the it would be the best if you left them to the one who does the best. I don't know if that answers the question, but I think that's what the NGMOs do, that we optimize uh, each other's job. If a local community wants to protect their water areas, then we let them do it uh, without governmental interferences. But if there's things that need to be done uh, legislatively, we will seek governmental help. Yeah, I think that's it. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, thanks so much, uh, Chong Dai Chan, for your hard work over the past days um, putting that together. Um, okay. I think it's important to, uh, to note, you didn't touch on it in your presentation, but you are using uh, fish classification algorithms in those processes, yeah. I think, aren't you? And I think another thing from your presentation that, that's, well, it's, it's kind of already been said, but congratulations on joining the dots between actual enforcement and and uh, empowering good management and actually doing the coll uh, collection of data as well because I mean I know for example there are many many projects uh, around the world that use spatial data that use AI data that use uh, social data like um, the environmental witness app that I mentioned earlier um, or a Karatagan patrol for the Philippines and while many of these projects are aware of what's going on, um, it's quite rare to see a full workflow from reporting to, to enforcement, actually. Uh, exactly. And I think that's a real massive achievement that we can all learn from. Uh, uh, and congratulations on, on doing it. It's, it's a great step. Thank you. Okay. So